in moderating the session for today. Um, today we'll be talking about supporting home-based care with Jitenge system, um, an introduction and a practical demonstration of how this can work. And with us, we will be having Kathy Mwangi, who will introduce her team and, and continue with the session. Um, I can... I can see from our attendees issues of CPD points. Again, just as a reminder for issues of CPD, kindly email us at knetcpd at gmail.com. And our team is, um, is working really hard to resolve all the queries that are there. Um, for pharmacists, you can email us at cpdpharmacy at gmail.com and we'll be able to get your emails. Um, before sending any email, kindly confirm that you have received your CPD points. Um, because they are um, being uploaded. Um, with that, I would like to hand over to Kathy Mwangi, who will introduce herself and carry on with um, the session for today on supporting home-based care. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, again, my name is Dr. Kathy Mwangi, and uh, I will start first by sharing my screen as I introduce myself. You let me know if you can see it. Um, can you view? Yes, we can view it. Maybe you can put it as a slideshow. Yes, now it's available. Okay. Thank you. All right. So my name is Dr. Kathy Mwangi. I work for M Health Kenya and uh, uh, I will be joined by a colleague. His name is uh, David Jeffer. Um, in uh, our presentation, it's going to be detailed. Uh, just talking about what we have been doing to support uh, home-based care using technology. And uh, I'll probably start a little bit with a history of how Jitenge started just to introduce the, the system. Um, this, this is a system that was uh, actually developed uh, starting March uh, and M Health Kenya has been working very closely with the Ministry of Health for, for many years supporting the HIV space um, and also supporting the Emergency Operations Center. So the EOC system that they use uh, called the um, emergency response and alert system, or uh, we also call it EARS, is a system that we developed for them. And so Jitenge was a, a module or, or a system that we developed that feeds into, the, into that emergency response and alert system. Um, in, in my presentation, I am going to introduce the system. Um, I will talk about the value proposition and the basic functionality of the Jitenge system. I will also uh, talk about the modules within the system, how, how clients or how users enter into the system and how they exit the system uh, and the navigation within Jitenge. And, and hopefully uh, after that, we can have a question and answer session. Um, and then after that, we will follow uh, with a practical session on the system that will be led by my colleague, David Jeffer. Uh, and just as an introduction, uh, Jitenge system is an integrated platform that allows the capturing of progress data um, for COVID-19 exposed individuals in quarantine or in isolation. Um, we, when we first started, we started uh, when all the, the quarantine was managed uh, at the national level. Uh, and, and so we were, we were helping the Ministry of Health to support all those who are being quarantined at the facilities before that role was pushed to the county level. Um, and as per the guidelines, the system uh, will either monitor uh, an, uh, an individual for 14 days on home isolation and care and seven days post facility quarantine and isolation. Um, and the, or, or there are also uh, truck drivers that are also 
followed up within, within the system. Uh, and, and what we do is as soon as they enter the country, we monitor them during the period when they are en route, uh, before they exit the country again. This system is available as an Android mobile application. Um, uh, so it, within, within the, the, when you download it, you would search into Play Store, Jitenge MOH Kenya. Um, and uh, so if you have an Android system, you can be able to use it. Uh, but we also have USSD sessions, the star 299 hash, that allows people to report uh, if they do not have uh, smartphones, uh, and they can use the US, the, the, the USSD 299 hash. Um, and, and it has a dynamic dashboard that allows uh, the healthcare workers to actually monitor or, or look at different uh, data sets that they would need to look at, um, but these are all raw data. So they are not able to see individual people that are being monitored within the platform. Um, the, again, this system has been developed as a module of the emergency alert and response system, which is the ERS system that M Health Kenya developed for, for the emergency operations center. Uh, the ERS has responded to over 40 infectious diseases in the last five years and it is domiciled in the, in the Ministry of Health, Public Health uh, Emergency Operations Center. Um, the value proposition for really, for using this system has been, the idea, the, the idea behind it was to, to have contacts, contacts uh, daily reporting reminders. Now, um, we all know that with COVID, um, we, you want to limit as much face-to-face -face contact with the healthcare workers. And it also assumed the fact that the numbers would grow. And as numbers grow, the healthcare workers would have a lot more work um, you know, in, in following up all the individuals that they have to follow up on a daily basis. So it, it eases the follow-up by the healthcare workers. What it also does is that as people are reporting daily, they, they, are, they are able to report their symptoms. Do they have high temperatures? Or a yes response to other questions like, do you have a cough? Uh, do you have a fever? And what the system does, it floods these cases with alarming responses. And these responses are sent to the healthcare worker. And so the healthcare worker then can follow up on those people that have those alarming symptoms. It also has a geolocation upon consent for clients. So when I'm downloading the Jitenge app, I'm asked to consent for geolocation. And so that allows for anyone to be able to see someone who's supposed to be on home-based care or isolation that keeps moving around. Uh, and and you, you are also able to see where numbers are concentrated from a, from a map. So we can map that. Now, remember the clients have to consent on this. We do not force anybody to, to consent to their geolocation. There are those who could say no. Geolocation is also just enabled for people with smartphones. So if you have a, 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 a mulikamuizi, for example, uh, this may not be possible. Or if you, you're reporting using a USSD, that may not necessarily be possible. Uh, various reports and data access levels from clusters uh, to sub-county level, to county level, and to national level. When you go to the dashboards, you're able to see different reports. And again, the reports that are visualized on the dashboard are all aggregate data. They do not have um, a personal identification, but they allow you to make certain or critical decision making if you need to do that at all those levels. Um, it is available again on Android and USSD, and it can work for both smart and feature phones. Uh, this Jitenge system is integrated with other existing systems, other COVID-19 data systems. For example, the other systems in use out there is the Kenya EMR for COVID-19. There is also the DHIS2, 
and we are also integrated with the lab transmission system by CHAI and another one that is currently in use at the, at the National Health Lab. So we, we, it, we, and we are constantly integrating. I think for, for truck drivers, I could also add that uh, we have integrated with another system that is used at the border points uh, uh, to pull information for all the truck drivers coming into the country. Um, the basic functionalities uh, for this system. Now, once you are exposed or you are, you are suspected to, you know, to have been, uh, you, you are a contact or you, you are suspected to have been exposed, um, then you qualify to, to be in this platform. Uh, and, and what this system does is it sends uh, reminders, system generated reminders so that this person who is already in Jitenge can report their symptoms. And, uh, and, and so we, once you're in the system, it is expected that you will be reporting your symptoms on a daily basis. So in the morning, the system sends a reminder for that particular person to be able to send their, their, um, their, their symptoms. And, uh, and so once they get a reminder, or if they, just report, they would be reporting the symptoms. Um, and, and that information then helps either capture the geolocation or it helps in decision making based on the report. And it, they, can, they do not report again until after six hours. So if you report all, all the questions asked, you cannot do another report in another hour you then can report again after six hours in case you've developed some symptoms. Um, now, if you do not report, uh, you will receive another reminder, um, another two reminders every two hours. Um, we send one at seven, seven o'clock in the morning. And then before one o'clock, there will be two other reminders. But then after one o'clock, if no, uh, no responses are sent, then a healthcare worker is 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 um, a message is sent to the relevant person. So if this person is linked to a healthcare worker somewhere, then and they do not re report even after the two hours, then a message is sent to the relevant person, who is es it's escalated to. So the idea is if you have someone under home based care and they do not report then the healthcare worker responsible for that person will receive a message saying that that person did not report. And at that time, that person, the, the healthcare worker has the liberty to now make the decision that they need to make, either make a phone call or visit that person. Um, so ideally that's how it works. There are uh, the reminders to the individual and then they report the symptoms and if they report the symptoms, the cycle continue, continues for 14 days. Now, how do they enter into the platform? Um, they enter into the platform either through self-registration. Um, we The, the self-registration uh, module is not as active because most of the people entering the platform, especially on home-based care, have to be registered um, by a healthcare worker. Now, you can also be registered by a healthcare worker at a designated quarantine facility. Remember, this system is also a quarantine uh, management system. Or you can be registered into home care and isolation by a healthcare worker. There are other people also registered uh, into the platform, either through the, the, the port health officials uh, at, the, at, at the border points. All the truck drivers that are coming in are registered. And, and we also have other systems like Kenya EMR. So you could be registered into Kenya EMR uh, and, and our system is integrated with the Kenya EMR and we are able to pull that data and start communicating um, with, the, with, 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 the, with the, the people registered on the platform. So ideally that's how the, the person enters into the Jitenge system. Now, when you complete your 14 days, you know, uh, upon completion of quarantine or isolation at the designated facilities as per the guidelines, then 
you would exit the, 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 the system. It automatically exits you if there are no any, any cases. Um, or if you complete the home care and isolation as per the uh, Ministry of Health guidelines, the system also exits you. But you can also be exited by an authorized healthcare worker. If after a certain period, um, maybe after 14 days, you had not, ex you know, the, the healthcare worker thought to, con to continue, uh, they can then exit you after a certain period. But only a healthcare worker who enrolled you can exit you from the platform. The Jitenge system has several modules. I have alluded to, to these uh, as I spoke. Uh, there is the home-based care and isolation module. And this is initiated by the healthcare worker as per the Ministry of Health guidelines. There is also a truck drivers module. Um, we know that there are a lot of people who are coming into the country from any of our neighboring countries. And as they come, they, they, are, ini they, they, they are initiated, uh, they, 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 they are enrolled into the platform by the, the officers at the point of entry. Um, and, uh, but a driver can also self-register before they enter uh, the, the, the country. And then once they are enrolled and they are linked to an officer, then the system picks them up and sends, starts sending them daily messages uh, until they, they exit the platform. Um, there is also the designated quarantine and isolation facility module. Um, this is the oldest module uh, with the self-quarantine module. They were the initial uh, modules that we started with where we were managing people when they were on, on a facility isolation. And, uh, and then we also have the self-quarantine where you can self-initiate um, once you have been exposed and, and uh, you can be monitored while you are isolated at home. So the general flow of the, of the Jitenge system modules, um, you know, a, a, a client is registered into the system. They are followed up. So immediately you are registered, um, you receive a message, and, and the follow-up is initiated. There will be periodic reminders and prompts to report. Um, there is uh, the, the, the app that you can download, but you can also report using the star 299 hash, which is it's quite a simple process because the, the questions are not many. And, and uh, the report of symptoms uh, is, is, as you report, in case the symptoms um, are reported, then there might be some, uh, some linkage to a healthcare worker who may uh, call that individual who's reported symptoms. So, when this information is collected, it, it feeds into a real-time um, dashboard, which is the EAS Jitenge dashboard. And, uh, you know, there is um, all the, the symptoms. There is a report on people reporting symptoms. If there is a change in severity of a symptom, there is information collected. And the only person who can see information, detailed information, on the individual would be the healthcare worker who enrolled that person, only because they may need to get in touch with that person that's, that's showing uh, symptoms. And uh, within that, that symptom, I mean, that system, we are also able to show uh, those, how many people have been enrolled in the system, how many people have ended their quarantine period, and, and uh, we may also have information from other systems that we have integrated with. Um, so the healthcare workers are able to manage, uh, to manage their individuals. They may be able to receive weekly, uh, monthly reports, uh, discharge and exit reports. And at a county level or a national RRTs level, they are able to get information to help them for plan, you know, in planning and they're able to get real-time informed decision-making just based on the, on the information they collect. Now, the system access levels are broken down as, as shown here. 
Um, several uh, exposed individuals are registered under, say, one healthcare worker. We, we realize that one healthcare worker uh, may be responsible for multiple people. And so they can register uh, as many people as they are managing within the platform. And they can be able to do that using uh, the, the Jitenge app, or they can log in into the EAS system, which also gives them a platform to register the, the, the people that they are managing. At a sub-county level, there is data from different healthcare workers who are in charge of several COVID-19 exposed individuals. Um, and, and this here is uh, um, aggregate by sub-county. Then we have a county level. At the county level, they are able to see information at the sub-county level, and you can also go as low as, as the, the, um, the, whole, you know, the individual, the healthcare worker level to see how many people within the healthcare worker that, that are reporting symptoms, how many are not reporting symptoms. Remember, we, the system can send all these reminders, but we, we stop at that level. The best we can do from a technological point of view is send reminders to the healthcare worker. But the healthcare worker now has to make sure that the people they are managing are reporting on a daily basis. If they don't report, they need to reach out to them to find out why they are not reporting. And that's data that can be, that can be seen at an aggregate level from the county and the sub-county level. And then it goes up to also the national, the national level. So the, all this data can be viewed at the national level, but remember, access has to be provided to the people who would need to see this. So uh, we can only give access to the individuals that the, the county has given us. So, uh, or the individuals we are working with at the county level has allowed to, to view this data. Um, now, while you're navigating, navigating uh, the system, uh, this is how, how uh, some of the screens look like. Uh, this is a healthcare worker registration uh, page. Uh, healthcare workers can register um, from the various access levels uh, and assigned, if you are assigned by county, sub-county, ward, and cluster. So in this case, uh, to the left, you're seeing a healthcare worker who registers uh, all the people they are managing under a cluster. Now, once you register, this healthcare worker would need to belong to a ward uh, or maybe uh, and, and, uh, and from that ward sub-county and from that sub-county go up to the county level. This helps when you are actually running your reports, you are able to see, um, you can go as, as low as what healthcare worker is managing which client. Uh, one healthcare worker is obviously assigned several patients and um, you can imagine as the numbers grow, uh, this one healthcare worker, if they are managing 20, 30, 40 individuals, it would be very difficult for them to do home visits to each one of these. And that's where now the technology helps. To the right, this is how they add the, the users into the platform. You will be able to see it live, but you, you have the name, you know, the username, um, the, the phone number, um, and, and uh, the email address. And this is now the, the user of the platform that's being added into into the system and that's why you're seeing access levels you know what will this healthcare worker need to see um, sometimes this functionality is given to somebody at the county level who would then be adding the people that need to use the platform but we would provide capacity and training for them to be able to do this um, this shows how you download the app uh, one would go into Google Play Store, and if you do type Jitenge, you should be able to see Jitenge on MOH Kenya. Uh, and then once you search, you choose uh, the first app that you find, and, and that's how it looks like. Uh, once you, you, you find it, then you can download it and install it on, on, on your device, on your mobile device. And after that, you would be able to use it moving forward. 
Um, as one downloads the app, now this is a healthcare worker module and that's why you see Jitenge MOH healthcare worker. If you are not uh, uh, added into the platform, uh, you may not, if you have a phone number, you may uh, download, but if you are not added as a user, you may not necessarily be able to function. When you download, the app asks you to allow the device the, to uh, allow access to the device. Um, after downloading the app, uh, if you give us permission, uh, then we would be able to, to, to um, locate this, this app. So the device location enables the app to capture where data is being reported from. Users are encouraged to activate their GPS location when reporting. Remember, if I'm at home, you want to make sure that I remain at home. And so if you are the healthcare worker managing me, then you should be able to know if I move around. So using the geolocation data, healthcare workers can monitor movement of people who should be in home isolation and care. Um, this shows the access verification on Jitenge. Verification requires a phone number and ID. Um, if I am not, in, in, you know, at, allowed at the county level, sub-county level. If I go to download this app, I may not necessarily be able to use it. Uh, but if, if my phone or if I'm added into the platform and I've been allowed access, then at this point, I may be able uh, to, to function. Uh, and, and you are registered into the platform using your phone number and your ID as a healthcare worker. Um, now, for those people who are going on self-quarantine, they can be allowed to sign up. You can, you can actually self-register. And when you log in, what you would find is home isolation. You are either on home isolation, you are either a truck driver. And this is a, the, a recent module that we have just added that will allow air travelers to actually self-register on the platform. So hopefully starting, starting next week, as soon as the international flights open, we do hope that this will be a, 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 a module that will be in use to allow people to self-register. Um, now, for healthcare workers, after verification, as a healthcare worker, the healthcare worker is able to see different tabs on the welcome page. Now, if you are self-registering, this is what you see as a user of the system. But as a healthcare worker, this is how it would look like. Uh, the healthcare worker is able to scan uh, truck drivers attestation to verify validity of the attestation. Um, this is mostly available. It is there for all healthcare workers, but it's mostly in use by those that are managing, um, you know, the port health officers that are managing truck drivers at the, at the point of entry. Uh, the healthcare worker is also able to help uh, truckers uh, register or, or do self-reporting at designated areas. And they're also able to register lab confirmed cases into home care isolation. Um, we have had a lot of uh, truck drivers that come and once they, they, they test positive, they are placed also on home, home care isolation. And this is how it happens. And the healthcare worker is able to do that using the mobile app. Um, now, when we are talking about home isolation and care, uh, this would be the, 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 the way the screen looks like for home care registration. And when clicking the home care isolation icon, the healthcare worker has to search if the details actually exist by searching their phone number to reduce duplicate, duplication of, uh, of registration. Now, remember, we are integrated with... Um, with other systems like the Kenya EMR. So we try to use, um, to use data already collected. So if you look me up into this app, I might have already been pulled into the system from Kenya EMR. And if they actually enrolled me correctly and they have my phone number, you should be able to continue with the enrollment without creating a duplicate registration. Uh, the, the home care registration also allows you to, um, you know, once you, 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 you searched me, uh, then you, you can continue to, to register me. 
into the, the home isolation by clicking that register uh, uh, button. Um, once, you, you know, to enroll on, on, on home care, there is obviously the country of origin. Uh, you will see that there is a requirement for which county uh, you are from, or, uh, but from those people who are foreign nationals, they would not have a county. Then they would be registered by the country and their nationality. And these are some of the information that would be asked. Uh, it's a sample uh, form on how to register on home isolation and care. Um, and then the user is enrolled into the platform. And this is a screenshot of how it would look like. If the patient is already enrolled in home isolation and care, there will be a notification that comes up that says client was already enrolled into home care. So that now you just pull them up and you do not double, uh, double enroll uh, an individual. When registration is done, after enrolling the patient on, onto, onto home-based isolation, an automated SMS message with the below details is sent uh, to the case individual. Um, and, and this goes out from a, a, a short code 40146. It is the short code that has been used uh, for this COVID-19 with Jitenge right from the beginning in March. The message that goes out is thank you. This would be thank you, for example, Kathy, for registering on self-quarantine. You will be required to send daily temperature details during the, this quarantine period for 14 days. And this is a message uh, on behalf of the Ministry of Health. Um, so th this message contains uh, a shortcut link. If you, you know, like in, in a case where, where people are reporting using an iPhone or you do not have a smartphone, um, you are asked to dial star 299 hash to send daily details. Uh, and then for Android users, you, you just uh, download the app and we also send you a link so that you are able to download it if you do not, uh, you, you have the option of downloading or you can go straight to, to Play Store and download the app. Um, now, the, like I said earlier, there are SMS reminders that go out. The first SMS goes out at 7 a.m. and there would be two more that would go uh, out but after one o'clock, we do not send another message to, to that individual. The message, the next message goes to the healthcare worker. So the kind of message that goes out is, uh, hello, Kathy, this is a reminder to submit your day one self-quarantine data. And that would continue um, every day. So day two, it would read day two until your day 14. Um, and, and, uh, if you do not report, the two messages that go out as reminders would say, uh, hello, Kathy, you have not yet submitted your day six, for example, uh, self-quarantine data. Kindly do so as soon as possible. And, and so two messages like that would go out to the individual until one o'clock. Now, if you do not report, there are then the reminders that go to the healthcare worker. So by 1 p.m., a final alert is sent to the healthcare worker who registered the care, alerting them that um, the case has not been submitted or that person has not sent any of their details and therefore the healthcare worker should do a follow-up. Um, another alert is also sent to the healthcare worker when the case sends temperature measures that are above 38. So, if I sent my message as, as a client in the morning at seven o'clock and my temperature is 38.5, then a message would go to the healthcare worker to also alert them that I have an alarming temperature. So those are just examples of the kind of messages that go out. The first one is, hello, Jeffa, a client you registered for number this has not submitted their day two self-quarantine data kindly reach out to them as soon as possible. And uh, the other message is, you know, hello, Jeff, you registered quarantine case, uh, Ronnie, um, and, and this person has reported a temperature of this, 
And this is just an alert to the healthcare worker so that they can follow up uh, on that individual. Now, once you are enrolled on the platform, just to show you how easy it is, it takes a very short time. Um, you, the, the, every day, the person is supposed to go onto the app and uh, uh, there's a form that for just self-evaluation uh, that the home isolation and care client should use to self-report. And it just says, you know, uh, reporting status, status for, 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 say, Kathy, have you, do you have a thermogun or a thermometer? If you say no, it's still okay, because we also understand that not everybody may have a thermogun or a thermometer, but it does ask if you've developed a fever, have you developed a cough, uh, and uh, have you, you know, are you having difficulty breathing? Um, and, and if you do, report yes, or, or, or give a, 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 a symptom that, that is, is uh, alarming, then it is a message goes, goes out to the healthcare worker. Um, the system also allows for uh, a comment. Um, uh, there, there should be, yes, there is, uh, please provide any additional information. That has also been very helpful. When we look at reports, we find a lot of comments. Somebody may have reported a symptom, but has additional um, other, other issues that they usually enter into the comments. So we always uh, recommend that healthcare workers actually try and, and look at the dashboards on the people they are managing so that they can see what other issues are going on um, with, with, the, with the people they are managing. Uh, if you're self-reporting using a, a, a feature phone, you just dial star 299 hash, uh, you enter the phone number used during registration for user verification, and at that point it prompts you to do your daily self-registration. This should be done daily uh, for the duration of, uh, of home care isolation period, and the SMS notifications will be sent daily just the same way as with the home care isolation that we, we discussed using the Android app. And just to show how it works, um, the home isolation and care without a smartphone uh, gives you, uh, you know, you go to your, to your, your screen and dial star 299 hash, and it will just ask you for your phone number. And once you enter your phone number in the field provided, it tells you you have entered an invalid phone number. Try again. If you have not been registered, that is the kind of message you will find. But if you are on the platform and you've already been enrolled, it will show you to select the patient. So the valid phone, phone number shows all users registered within that same number. Now remember, I could have, uh, I could be Kathy Mwangi registered on the platform, but I could also be registered with my children. We could be isolating with my children and I can report for multiple users. So I can report for myself, maybe as number one, and then report for my child, my children as number two or number three. So if you have multiple people enrolled within the, that same phone, you would find uh, all the people uh, when, you, when you log in um, that you are supposed to report for. So it asks you, again, the same questions that we had, do you have a thermogun? You say yes. Uh, what's your body temperature? If you say yes, then it, it, uh, you, you, you type it out. And have you developed a fever? Yes or no? Um, have you developed a cough? Yes or no? Uh, and all you do is enter one or two. Uh, do you have difficulty breathing? You enter one or two. And then if you have any additional comments, you enter them there and you, you hit send. And it just tells you your response for day, day number one was recorded successfully. Again, I will, I will say that for healthcare workers, the information, the additional comments have been, you know, are, are quite useful. We've, we've seen all kinds of comments where people are actually recording additional symptoms. And it's been quite interesting to just see uh, the kind of comments people are sharing. Now, at the dashboard level, this is how the dashboard looks like. Uh, you can view patients that are under home isolation. Now, as you see, if you do not have access to see 
any uh, uh, information that uh, patient information, you would not see it. This would only be available for the individual or the healthcare worker that is managing those patients. And, and um, so in this case, uh, all registered under home, home care isolations would be viewed. Uh, details of all patients will appear on a table above. Um, and uh, patients' names can only be viewed by people who are allowed for security purposes and, and also you know, for confidentiality. Um, we are able to flag those symptoms. So if anybody actually reports uh, symptoms, the healthcare worker then needs to follow them up. We flag them in red, and we also have a completely separate report for all those people who, have, who, are, you know, who are symptomatic to make it easy for the healthcare worker to, to follow them up. So this is just an idea of how that dashboard would look like. Anybody who's not taking, taking the direct care of an individual would not even have the option to see the names or, or, or contacts. All they would see is aggregate data. You know, how many people are reporting symptoms, how many people by county, and I'll show you a, 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 a sample report uh, that you would be able to see. Now, when you're looking at, remember we talked about the geo-coordinates? This is how um, the geo-coordinates would assist. Uh, a sample of how the map of self-reporting details were sent would, would, would show up this way. So if Kathy has been reporting on my phone and I've reported three or four times, I am supposed to be in one location, but if you pull me up, and this is how my map looks like, then it means that I've been moving around, which means I'm not uh, at the same place that I should have been while I am reporting. Uh, and so this is what would help a healthcare worker to actually see if I turn on my coordinates, am I where I'm supposed to be? If I'm supposed to be somewhere in Kiambu in my location, and this is how I keep reporting, that that should alert the healthcare worker that there is a problem. Um, just a few highlights uh, since we started implementing. Uh, this is just a, an idea uh, uh, of, of how our numbers look like. Uh, we, we so far have a total number of, of, of 9,375 registered in the platform. Uh, we, we have over 4,600 truck drivers. Um, now, the truck driver module and the, and the quarantine uh, modules are the oldest uh, that have be currently been used um, since March and April. Uh, the home-based care registrations are, are, are at 2,218. Uh, as you see, not many people within the platform have shown, uh, have, have, have been reporting symptoms. Um, but, you know, these are some of the, the, I think there have been about 75 that have reported symptoms that have had to be followed up. Um, as we speak out of this 9,375, those who've completed the quarantine period of 14 days are 5,700. And right now, as we speak, the people who are still active within those 14 days are 3,659. Um, in the month of July, we've, we've seen a lot more numbers increase as the counties are, are registering more and more people in home-based care. Um, and so as the, as the, and, and, and we've also seen an increased use in the truck drivers module. Um, we are able to also do look at aggregate data of, uh, of people registrations by county. Um, and as we speak, uh, you will see missing county. That 5,148 who are missing county are either uh, foreigners who come in uh, from other countries and obviously we do not have a county for them. They could also be truck drivers who are coming from other countries and are en route. And, and um, also a big number of that are people who we started monitoring when the quarantine uh, and isolation was at the national level. When this kicked off, uh, most people were being managed at, at the facility, facilities and we were working with the national government to, to monitor them. 
And at that time, we were enrolling them uh, as, as either Kenyans or, or, or with their countries. And so we were not capturing county. But moving forward, we've started uh, capturing county and uh, other than the foreigners. And as we speak, we have a 1,794 that we have uh, managed uh, in Nairobi. And these are just numbers that, that, that we have currently. We have registrations uh, that are spread within 44 counties. But again, the, the numbers are quite low in some of those counties. Um, in, in, uh, we, we have one county that has registered over 1,000, and, and that's Nairobi. Uh, we have six counties that have 100 to, to 1,000. And then 19 counties have enrolled 10 to 100 registrations. And, uh, and 18 counties that have one to 10. Again, this is a mix of both home-based care and, and uh, isolation and also truck drivers. Uh, the numbers you see here are, are for any of the modules within Jitenge. Now, what are the opportunities? Uh, you know, when, when right now the technology is readily available any counties that are ready to use the technology. M Health Kenya is ready to train. We've been doing a lot of virtual training. Uh, we've been supporting uh, virtually and a lot of the numbers that you have seen, uh, we've been able to enroll from training. Um, and and uh, the automation of reminder messages is there and alerts to ensure healthcare workers do not have to worry about registered clients. Uh, they, they, can, they can do follow-up on those that are reporting symptoms. And so it also reduces the load on the, on the healthcare workers on calling uh, every so frequently. And the technology is able to do most of that for you. Uh, obviously, there are challenges. Uh, again, for, for us as a, as, a, as a technical team, our, our, our ability stops at, at notifying the healthcare workers. So if we, if we send messages to those who are uh, on home-based care or those who are on isolation and they do not report and we send the healthcare worker a message and they don't follow up, then the reporting rates will not be high. So the assumption is that the healthcare worker will pick that up and, and make sure they follow up on those who are reporting symptoms. Also, the healthcare workers, they need to support in terms of resources so that when the clients fail to report, they are able to do the follow-up. We are not able to do that uh, unless we are just doing a proper, you know, a, a monitoring and evaluation and we are just following up on the healthcare workers to find out, are you still reporting? But our, our role and our scope really ends there. Uh, but we can do everything that we, we need to do to, to provide a capacity in terms of training to make sure that there is ease of use. But after that, um, we, we would need the, the healthcare workers or the counties or partners to support the healthcare workers so that they are able to, 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 to follow up on those clients that are not reporting symptoms. Um, for, for, for counties, or partners that take this up. Uh, we always like to share this, um, you know, the IT investment required. Obviously, if you're registering uh, the healthcare workers uh, using the EAS platform, you would need a computer, a working computer. And these are just the minimum specifications, you know, a 4G GB RAM or minimum storage of about 500 GB drive and a network card you know, or, or Wi-Fi to just enable uh, connectivity. Uh, you need stable internet, obviously, because you're, you're, you're logging into, into the ES system, which, which needs internet to, to enroll these people. Um, then if you are using uh, Android, it is possible to register people using Androids or, or uh, smartphones. Um, it, you can, you know, for healthcare workers to register uh, people in home, home care. Uh, we've seen a lot, a lot of healthcare workers that are enrolling people on home-based home care are actually doing that using their smartphones. Quite a small number of people are enroll, you know, enrolling by logging into, into the, the EAS platform or using a computer, 
we've seen more numbers of people enrolled using the phone. And again, the minimum specs are, are, are you know, an Android version uh, SDK 16 or an, an operating system of Android 4.1 or the RAM 512 and, and a storage of about 850 MB. You don't need a very um, uh, advanced Android phone to be able to operate Jitenge. These are really uh, minimum, minimum specs and, and they, it can actually operate on these. Um, obviously, at, uh, when we look at county level, you would need somebody to be able to enroll uh, those individuals, like who are these healthcare workers that are managing people. Uh, it's, uh, the counties would need to know who that admin person is, who we would then provide capacity and training to be like the system admin uh, at that level. And then um, the, the healthcare workers can be, can be entered into the system and you can only give access levels to, to those people that you need uh, to see patients' information. Everybody else would then see aggregate data. We can support to, to, to do all those trainings to the people who need to be trained to be able to manage that information. Um, you know, uh, and, and in terms of roles, uh, registering exposed patients into home isolation on the cluster would, would, you know, would be the healthcare worker. And then they would get those default no notifications um, and, uh, and daily follow-ups and alerts. So that, that's ideally it's, it's an admin and, and the healthcare workers uh, because the admin then has to enroll the, the users into the system. Um, I am done right now. Um, I, I, I would probably uh, want to op open it up to my colleague, uh, Jeffa, um, who I hope is already there. He can let me know if he's ready. Uh, but uh, I don't know whether I should take questions as I wait for him to do the, to do the demo or how. Uh, uh, I, I can't see David Jeffa. I am here. I am here. Region. Okay. You can continue. Okay, Jeffa, you can you can sh I, I, you can share your screen and 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 uh, do the demo. Over. Hi, Jeffa. Um, maybe you can unmute yourself and um con proceed with the presentation. Um. Uh, we are not sure you've joined as which device, so maybe if you make us aware, we can switch you to become a panelist. Okay, so I've, 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 I'm having two devices, uh, but maybe I could use uh, the current that I'm talking with uh, so that I can I can also be able to display uh, my, my mobile device to show uh, how we enroll uh, users into the system. So you could, you could uh, make this account as a panelist. Uh, that's fine. Uh, you can proceed. Thank you so much. Uh, so much has been talked uh, uh, by Dr. Kathy. Uh, I think I'll start by showcasing uh, the system. So um, maybe you need to start by downloading. So once you go to Play Store, uh, like it had been indicated by Dr. Kathy during the presentation. Uh, you go to Play Store and then uh, you're going to look for Jitenge. Uh, so I, you'll search for Jitenge app uh, in, in Play Store and then uh, for my case, I've already searched and installed the app. Uh, when you look for Jitenge app, it's going to give you the first uh, name, Jitenge MOH Kenya. So when you open Jitenge MOH Kenya, you download and install it. Uh, after installing, now you open. Uh, so I was already logged in. I start by logging out so you can see how the system looks like. So at this point uh, of registration, when you install the app for the first time, uh, it's going to request you to have uh, to allow uh, location. Uh, so this is the point where now uh, the location will only be matched when you're sending uh, your your data. Uh, I know most people will have questions when they see a uh, location, they might think they're being tracked. So the system does not track an individual where they are. Uh, we are only picking up 
tracking when we are, we are sending uh, your daily data. Uh, so at that point when you are doing submit that data is when now uh, location is going to be matched. And um, uh, location is, is optional. Uh, not everyone, uh, I mean, if somebody is not comfortable sharing the locations, it's optional. Uh, as we have the legalities which are stopping us from going um, mandatory to capture locations. So the app can be used by both users. Uh, a healthcare worker can also download uh, and a patient can download, like, like Dr. Kathy had mentioned. There are two ways somebody can be able to self-report. Uh, most people usually prefer the USSD code because it's quick. Uh, but for the healthcare workers who are going to be matched to patients, uh, they are going to be uh, forced to use the app because now this is where now they can be able to have a list of all the people who uh, belong to them in terms of care, and then they can also enroll and, and they'll be getting a notification. So the system also comes in a way that um, healthcare workers can help uh, those ones who are illiterate. Uh, we can have patients who are illiterate, don't know how to do it. So the app allows the healthcare worker to also help uh, these individuals to automatically report. So I'll key in my, my phone number. Um, I'm registered as a healthcare worker. And then uh, I'll be able to key in the ID number that I registered with. So this is a one-time process. Uh, all users will be required to key in their phone numbers and their ID number. Uh, this helps us to match out so that not just anyone can be able to access the system. Uh, this is the verification process uh, that has to be done only once. So upon clicking continue, uh, it's going to check into the system and, and find if I'm, I'm, I'm a registered users. So if I am registered and I exist into the system, then uh, as a healthcare worker, I'll get a different menu. Uh, I'll showcase how, what kind of menu uh, uh, a patient will get. But basically, um, on the beginning of the app, you see we have a EOC call, uh, the button. So when I click that button, then it's going to give me uh, the hotlines. These are the um, COVID-19 hotlines. Uh, as you can see, hotline number three is the toll-free line. So these hotlines uh, dial directly into the emergency operating system. I mean, the opera, uh, operation center uh, that is at uh, Kenyatta. Uh, anyone can try any of those numbers. You'll be able to be assisted just in case um, there is any emergency that you need to follow up with. Uh, so going down, you can see that um, the system tells me you're logged in as a healthcare provider. And then I can be able to search what I want to do. You can be able to see that we have three different menus. Uh, depending on uh, what ca uh, capacity you are, uh, uh, remember the system is used differently. We have those ones who are uh, only concentrated on, with truck drivers. And then we have the home care. Uh, as we speak right now, we are working on the airport module, which is going to be part of these uh, 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 buttons that we are seeing. Uh, so for the first one, the attestation, uh, this is for uh, the truck drivers. The system comes, uh, is integrated with the, with the um, uh, national lab system. We are now automatically for every registration that we are able to do into the system, uh, there is a manifest of the uh, sample collection that is also in the system. It is required for all users uh, who, are, who are going through the lab to fill. So these details are going to be matched uh, at the sample collection. And then uh, through the national system, then uh, the integration that has been made to the system, we are able to match out results and pick them up. So currently we match results uh, for truck drivers. Uh, we've been able to match out of the 5,000 numbers that uh, Dr. Kathy was, was showing, we've been able to match uh, uh, results of over 3,000 truck drivers. And uh, these results come actually, uh, and then uh, an attestation is generated. So this attestation is going to be used um, when they are moving in within the country. So at whatever point they're going to be stopped, uh, they'll be asked for that attestation, which will have a QR code. Uh, so the system uh, will allow this healthcare worker to uh, log into the system and scan this QR code. So upon clicking the QR code, uh, it's going to pick up a, a scanner. So this scanner is going to scan that QR code uh, of the printed attestation. And then automatically when you scan, it's going to, uh, um, to identify if that particular QR code, I mean, that attestation is valid. So this is specifically a module for uh, healthcare workers who are dealing with the uh, truck drivers. Uh, the next module is a uh, truck driver follow-up. So this is where now uh, the, the people at whatever uh, spotting section, they can be able to help these truck drivers to either uh, follow up uh, cases or to register. So it's, it's a module that I thought I need to mention because um, they are up, up on the system. But for our case today, we'll concentrate on the, the last one, which is the home isolation. 
so the healthcare worker under home isolation will come and click home isolation and then it's going to take them into a page uh, so for this page you'll be able to see i have names uh, down here so these are the names that i've been able to register as a healthcare worker so you'll be able to get a list of all the people who are uh, uh, you as a healthcare worker you're responsible for uh, these are the people that uh, if they default in uh, self-reporting, you'll be notified about. Uh, these are the same people when they are reporting any symptomatic uh, conditions, uh, you'll, be report, you'll be told about. So uh, at first, when you log in uh, and you are, it's a first time instance of using Jitenge, the list will be blank. So you can be able to register or search for patients who are in the system uh, that need to be enrolled into self-care. So for example, um, when I put on a phone number, I'll just key in a phone number that doesn't exist, uh, just a random number. And when I click search, um, automatically you'll see it's telling me the phone number uh, is, uh, you registered does not exist. And then it tells me, Do you, would you like to register into home base? So when I click register now, uh, it's gonna give me a form. Uh, so this is the form that now we'll be able to use to register, uh, I mean, these patients. Uh, we are searching for numbers so that we don't do multiple registrations, uh, though if you do multiple registration, then the system is smart enough to tell you that uh, that particular uh, phone number has already been registered. And if you need to register, uh, let's say uh, you are a parent and you want to add an additional person to that number, then the system will allow you uh, to be able to add more, more, more uh, people into that number. Uh, so at this point, you're going to select uh, if you're coming from any country. Uh, but if you're from Kenya, you can be able to search and, 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 and search Kenya. It will give you that drop option. And then you can, if you're in Kenya, it's going to go ahead and ask you for uh, the, your county and sub-county. Uh, so automatically, when you go and say, I want to, I'm, I'm from Nairobi, for example, um, Nairobi, then automatically it will pull for you all the sub-counties within Nairobi. Uh, and then I can be able to say, for example, I'm coming from uh, Kibra. And then if I click Kibra, then it's going to select for all, us all the sub I mean, all the words that are in Kibra. And then from there, you can be able to select uh, which word you're coming from. So I'll just select uh, this one. And then from there, uh, it, needs, it asks you what nationality are you? Uh, so I'll say, I wouldn't select Afghanistan. So I'll just say Kenya. Uh, and then from there now you can, you're going to fill all those forms. Eh? Uh, so your 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 physical address, your first name, last name, uh, the idea and passport, the idea or passport number. Uh, this can either be an alien number for those ones who are foreigners, and then uh, email address. Not all inputs are, are mandatory. And then you can be able to select your your gender and, uh, and the date of birth. Where now we can select uh, the year, and then uh, whatever month you are you are born. Uh, and then from there, you can be able to key in your phone number. Uh, so the phone number here is used to track you. Uh, the system uh, can work with any country. So you can be able to select even if you are, uh, your phone number is a Tanzanian number. Uh, for example, if I'm, I'm from Tanzania, then uh, I can be able to, it will automatically select for me the country code and then I can key in my, my phone number. And then there is a, uh, the place of contact. Where exactly uh, is this individual? Uh, and then the most important is the enrollment date. Uh, when you click the enrollment date, this is the date now uh, that the system will start tracking you. Uh, as you can see, enrollment date cannot be a future date. Uh, the future dates are disabled. But for somebody who was enrolled in a day that um, probably they got tested and they got the results, let's say, for example, on 20th, uh, and they want to follow up. So the healthcare worker will determine, should they start the follow-up on 20th or should they start immediately? Uh, the system by default comes immediate as a follow-up day, but I can be able to say I want to start my follow-up as, as on 20th. Uh, so if I pick that, then the system is smart enough knowing that from 20th to today, uh, 28th, then this particular individual should be on his uh, day eight of follow-up. So from tomorrow morning, then it's going to continue follow-up with you from day nine. Uh, and then the message will custom or will be customized depending on which day you started your follow-up. So you can fill up this form and uh, at the last there is the prefer language preference uh, like you can see. So currently the system comes with three different languages. So these are the languages now uh, which uh, the user will be getting messages from. So by default, uh, if you don't select the language, it comes on English. But if you're going to select Swahili, then all communication that comes through the system uh, will, be trans uh, will be pushed in Swahili or French. And then from there, you click enroll. So I'm not going to enroll because it's a live system, but I'll take you back to 
uh, where now we already have our user. So I'll clear that phone number. And then from there now, I'll, I'll go back to my list. So I'll get back to my list where now I have my list. So upon uh, enrolling this individual, then you'll be able to see them in the list. Uh, and then now when they are there, you can be able to click. When you click on them now, it's going to ask you to enroll them. Uh, so currently the list that I have are people who are already enrolled into home care. Uh, so I can't re-enroll them. The only thing is I can exit them from mCare uh, if need be, or I can be able to help uh, report symptoms. For example, if I say report symptom for them and then I continue, it's going to give me uh, the form for uh, reporting these symptoms. And then you can see clearly it's telling me uh, you're reporting for Dennis Mwoki as our patient. Uh, so from there, uh, this is actually how a, a healthcare worker can help uh, a patient to report. So this form will, will depend on at what level. When a, health, uh, when a patient logs into the system, this is the first form they'll be able to see. Uh, so this is how they'll be able, they'll be able to self-report using uh, the, the, the system. So for example, if I say I have a, a thermal gun or thermometer, then the system will force me to enter my temperature. But if I say I don't have a thermal gun or thermometer, then uh, you're not going to be forced to enter your temperature. You can go ahead and answer the other questions. Uh, if you've developed fever, you can say yes or no, uh, yes or no, uh, yes or no. So these are the, uh, the indicators that we're going to see. Anything that is a yes um, upon submission, then it's going to be escalated to that particular healthcare worker who has uh, enrolled them into the system. Uh, for example, I'm logged in as a healthcare worker. If I report uh, for this particular patient of mine who is called Dennis Moki, then automatically an SMS is going to come to me, uh, notifying me of these uh, indicators. And then at the end of it all, we have a section for comments, uh, where now you can key in additional comments, the size of an SMS. Uh, this has been so famous with people during uh, uh, quarantine isolation, uh, where now people can be able to tell us if they're having any other symptoms, or uh, any other uh, thing they, which they need to escalate in, uh, to the system uh, using this platform. So um, at that point, uh, if somebody has, has, uh, has been pushed, taken, maybe uh, has turned to be positive, I mean, uh, the symptoms are, are, have required them to go back to, I mean, to, to the facility or to the hospital, then this particular healthcare worker can come now and exit them from Jitenge. So when you click exit from Jitenge and continue, then automatically uh, notifications are going to be stopped for that particular uh, patient. So, um, I think I'll stop there for the home care and then I'll be able to showcase a sample of the dashboard from uh, my computer. Where do I stop? Okay. I'm trying to stop uh, presenting on my mobile phone, but it seems, yes. So I hope you can all see my screen. So this is the, is, is the dashboard. Uh, I've decided to use a, a testing site uh, where you can be able to see the different modules within the system. Uh, like Dr. Kathy had mentioned earlier, uh, the system is, uh, uh, was built on top of the ER system. Uh, ER system is the major system that has been working at the emergency operation center uh, for, the for, the, for the past uh, five years. Uh, it has been generally used to track um, uh, diseases and public health events that uh, affect the country, uh, where they do media scanning and uh, uh, different sources of input uh, to capture the, the, uh, them into the system. So this will generate automatically uh, weekly and daily reports, which help them uh, following up and all that. Uh, so the system is also integrated to DHIS2, uh, where now any uh, disease or any public health event that is a confirmed case uh, and is of high importance, then it can be pushed uh, to the DHIS2. Uh, and we also pull uh, the weekly 505 data where now analysis can be done in terms of those indicators, uh, weekly indicators in terms of number. To see different modules. So we have the home care registration. Uh, so registration can either be done uh, on, the, on the phone or can also be done on the web. 
uh, for those ones who prefer to do on the web. So when you click the registration, it's going to give you a form. So this is a form which is actually similar to what I showcased uh, on the mobile app, where you're going to key in these details and save. So upon saving these details, automatically uh, a message is going to be escalated to that particular uh, patient and notify that they've been they've been uh, uh, enrolled. And then it also takes them through the same same notification that Dr. Kothi was able to show. And then we have um, the home care list, which is going to give us a list uh, of all individuals uh, who are in the system. So this will give us a list of everyone. Uh, we can be able to pull and, and match. This is test data. This is not uh, live people. So you can be able to uh, do different, pull different forms and be able to see who has been enrolled. Uh, we can be able to edit their details and do much. You can be able to filter based on dates and different parameters. And then the next actually is the follow-up. So the follow-up is what will show us all the people who have been sending their data into the system. Uh, this is test data where we've only captured one person having done follow-up. You can be able to see flagging in terms of those who are symptoms. Uh, so anyone who is symptomatic and, and the temperature is higher than 38 degrees, then automatically the system is going to flag them. Uh, at the same time, um, you're going to have uh, the symptomatic cases, uh, like that particular case is asymptomatic. We can be able to see him on this list of symptomatic. So at any given point, uh, a health, any healthcare worker at a higher level can log into the system, depending on uh, their user credentials and rights. They can be able to see different reports. Uh, so for example, if I'm at a, uh, at a lowest level, at the uh, healthcare worker level, I will only be able to see people who have enrolled directly. Uh, but at a higher level, uh, supervisory level, then somebody can be able to see uh, all uh, a list of all those healthcare workers who are sent to him. Uh, and at a county level, then somebody can be able to see uh, everything that is happening at the county. And then it also cascades at the national level where now uh, somebody can see everything depending on the county and filter uh, a lot more to be able to see what is happening. Uh, and then finally, we have a list of all those who have completed home care. Uh, so anyone who has completed 14 days is going to be pushed into the uh, completion list where now uh, initiation can be restarted. Let's say, for, for example, somebody uh, had already been registered. We don't discard their data. The data is still going to be in the system. Uh, for that case, when they are going to be re-exposed and they want follow-up to be initiated again, then uh, you don't have to do that uh, registration process again, but they can just be pulled and enrolled into home care. Uh, so home care is a one-to-many relationship where now one healthcare worker is going to be allocated to a cluster, like it had been mentioned. Uh, somebody can be uh, responsible for Nyumbakumi, let's say 10 houses. That's a healthcare worker who's responsible for that. So upon being enrolling anyone into home care, uh, no other healthcare worker can enroll them. Uh, if, if, for example, I am a patient and I've been enrolled by uh, a healthcare worker called Susan, then I'll, I'm only going to deal with Susan until I finish my follow-up. Uh, anyone else who wants to pull me into the list into healthcare worker, the system will not allow uh, until I finish my 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 follow-up period and I'm, I'm, I'm exited to that uh, uh, home care module. So from there, then anyone else can be able to pick. So I would like to stop there for today uh, and let uh, take it back to our chair so we can be able to initiate the question and answer section. Thank you so much. Um, thank you very much for this presentation. And I think it's a, a really, really lovely system that has actually um, been set up to track our patients. And even as the numbers are going up, I know all counties are thinking about how do we contain the virus? How do we take care of our patients that are um, enrolled on home-based care? How, how, how do we just generally manage COVID-19? And um, we'll proceed to the question and answer. And I'll give a comment that has been put here by one of the attendees. And they're wondering, um, I know you've, you've put up a presentation of how many counties are actually using it, but what, what, in terms of engaging the Ministry of Health and the counties, what is the buy-in such that uh, it's more driven from the county itself as opposed to people self-registering? So what's, what, what challenges have you had in terms of buy-in from the county the counties themselves. Hi, this is Kathy. Um, I'll most likely let uh, Jeffa respond to most of the technical questions as they come, uh, but I will respond to this one. Um, so this system has been developed to support the emergency operation center team 
uh, and we are funded through through CDC. So um, what we have been doing is the engagement with the counties has been coming uh, from the national level. So the the emergency operations center team uh, are the ones who've been engaging uh, the counties, and uh, a lot of the trainings that we have done has been through that that team. So in terms of buying, uh, actually the numbers that we showed at the county level um, were done. We we are we are we are told County X is ready. We train them. We provide uh, as much capacity as we can and they start using the platform. So we, we do not necessarily en engage the counties directly because this is a system that we have developed on behalf of the, of, of the ministry. So, um, so far, as you, you've seen with the, with the home-based care numbers, these, these have been numbers uh, within, within the month of July because the, the home-based care module actually kicked in in July. Um, uh, with with the with the tracker trackers that that is a module that's being managed through the point of entry team so port health team uh, we were invited we trained them and they picked that and 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 ran with it literally so what we do is when we're invited to do the trainings we do the trainings and we have officers who are the administrators we support them until when they can enroll uh, the healthcare workers or when they can manage the platform. But so far, the, a lot of the buy-in has been because we are not necessarily the ones who are engaging the counties. It has been the, 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 national, government, the, the national team that has been engaging the county um, over. Um, thank you very much for this. And there's a comment here from Rose Mwan Nawiro. Um, who's commenting that the system is really great and it will make work easy and reassure patients that they are not alone in this and they have not been left attended. So her question is in terms of awareness creation about the Jitenge um, platform. So how are we creating awareness for, for, for this platform? Because it can work and not many people are aware that this platform is there. Okay, um, well, maybe I, I could start by saying, you know, when we first started, uh, we, you know, everybody who was being registered or enrolled into the platform had to be enrolled, enrolled through a healthcare worker or, or enrolled uh, in the beginning, obviously, through the national government. Um, the self-registration that is being done uh, right now, uh, you're either a, a truck driver or you, most likely um, you, the, the people who will be coming through the, the point of entry. We have not yet gone completely full throttle to allow um, the public to self-register yet, um, only because I think we wanted to concentrate on the current need for those who really need to be followed up. Uh, and that's why we've not necessarily gone completely public. Uh, just to be able to manage those who need to be managed in the platform, the guys in isolation, people on home-based care. And, 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 and I think we, maybe if we could even call it the first two months, you know, there was a lot of, um, you know, piloting of the system to make sure the system actually works the way it should. Um, in terms of going public on the on the technology, I would want to believe it wouldn't really be our mandate. This is a a, a system that we have developed for the government. It it is not ours. Ideally, the the goal is to make sure that it is owned uh, by the Ministry of Health. So it wouldn't be our mandate to actually go public on it. It would be the Ministry of Health to make that decision. Over. Um, thank you very much from that, for that. Um, there's a question here from Joanna Olale, and, and she's wondering, does this app keep track of the patients who, um, I know you said that it's keeping track of symptomatic patients, but these patients, when they are transferred to hospital after the alerts 
of their deteriorating status? Does it still keep track of them? So, so the, uh, the, goal, the, the goal for this system is to, is to help the healthcare worker manage the, the symptoms up to the point where there will be need for, for that individual to go to a facility. At that point, our, system, our mandate stops there and, and the Kenya EMR system picks up from there. And that's why we were, we were saying we've, we've had integrations with, uh, with other systems that need to pick up from there. Um, there, there was even, I think, an earlier question that I had seen where someone was asking if this system could, is doing contact tracing, and, and it's not. Uh, our system picks up once individuals are, are, are contract, contact traced. And so once a decision is made, whether they are going on isolation, quarantine in a facility, or, or they've tested positive and they're going on home-based care, that's where our system kicks in. Once they, are, they, they go to a facility and they are picked up into a facility, Kenya EMR kicks in at that point. So that, that's really our, our scope right now. But we are integrated with the other existing systems. Over. Um, a lot of the questions I've seen from the attendees is in terms of monitoring, I mean, tracking of these patients while at home or in the isolation places that they are in. And a lot of the attendees are wondering, so um, are there consequences, like for the slide that you showed that um, once GPS is, is showing that the person has been at different places, are there, um, is there a follow-up of notification for the people who are not adhering to the strict isolation guidelines and what are those systems like? And what of that person who decides to either switch off their phone or they have two phones, so they know this is the one that's being tracked and they can move around with the second phone. And it's something that Kenyans do right now. Uh, most of us have two phones. So how does this work? Um, so unfortunately, uh, or fortunately, depending on which side of the fence you're sitting, uh, in Kenya, the law would not allow us to, to do that, to, to, to monitor you or to, technologically, it is possible. Um, if, if we had the mandate, we would then work with the telecoms uh, and, and integrate to the point where it doesn't even matter whether you, you have a, a smartphone or, or a feature phone. Uh, technically, it is possible to do that. However, uh, in Kenya, our legal system does not allow us to do that. You would have to consent for us to follow you up. So what we do is if, you, if someone had already consented, uh, we, we are able to alert the healthcare worker if that person is not reporting from where they're supposed to report. But um, technically, we are not allowed to, to completely monitor you if, you are not, if you've not consented. So um, I guess it's the same thing if, if I would look at it from a real-time point of view, if you are the healthcare worker uh, and you're monitoring somebody from home, you know, you are not with them 100% of the time. So even for the healthcare worker, it would be difficult for you to know if that person is actually at home where they're supposed to be. So what we've been doing is just encouraging the healthcare workers to also encourage those people who are on home-based care um, you know, and, and, and I think it's, it's really about sensitization. You know, the risks, you know, the risks that that person holds if they actually go out there and, and uh, exposing other people. But right now, that's where, that's as far as we can go. Um, and unless the government allowed us to do it, which, which is not the case at this point. Over. There's a question here from Jonathan Mwangi. Uh, who's asking, is there provision for enrolling more than once? Uh, for example, a healthcare worker who's been exposed severally, can they enroll themselves more than once to this app? Jeffa, could you take that? 
Yes. Uh, so so um, once you are registered, your details uh, keep on remaining into the system. Uh, in case somebody is exposed, then we don't have to register you again. Uh, so there is that process of now pulling that uh, uh, the details of this particular individual and then reinitiating that process uh, of now uh, monitoring again. So there'll just be a button where now you'll click and then automatically uh, it's going to start now following you up from, from that particular day for the next 14 days. So yes, it's possible. Over. Uh, thank you very much for that. Um, there's a question here from an anonymous attendee, and she's one, he or she's wondering, um, is this system just um, for for county hospitals? I mean, for just the counties or private facilities and parastatals can actually use this platform to take care of the people they've sent for home isolation or home quarantine? So the system is open for, for use, um, but we've actually done, done some training, uh, I think was it this week or late last week to other partners bes besides county level that uh, are also managing um, uh, people on home-based care in their facilities. Um, I think the, the only requirement would be those facilities do, in which county are they in because our reports, as, as we work on our reports, the reports are based on the county, sub-county level. So it doesn't really matter whether the facilities or the partners managing home-based care are private or, or NGOs or not. The, the, we, we just need, you just need to, to let us know and we will provide whatever, whatever training we, we can do to, to support them to start using the platform. Over. Um, there's a question here. Um, so I know you stated that one of the challenges is you're not able to see whether the healthcare worker have actually followed up the patient who's either in home quarantine or isolation or even the trackers. So um, does the app have a provision for a supervisor who can be able to look at the work that the healthcare worker is providing such that if a healthcare worker has been assigned these particular patients to follow up, um, the supervisor can be able to tell whether that has been done or not. Yes, the, 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 the way the system is designed, remember the, the, we, we talked about access levels. So a, a healthcare worker, even as, as a, let's say I'm the healthcare worker and I, I enroll people within my cluster um, I probably have somebody maybe at the ward level that I'm reporting to or the sub-county level that I'm reporting to. Um, we just need to be guided to link, uh, to link or the admin, uh, admin level person would be the one to link that, that line so that the healthcare worker, once uh, it, they do not report, who would be the next person that, that it should be escalated to? And it can be in form of a report an email, you know, it, it's really dependent on, on how um, the, the county or, or the, the, the partner wants to do it. But it is possible to have that escalated if the healthcare worker is not, uh, is not uh, reporting or is not doing what they need to do. There can be several escalation upwards. And remember the reports, um, there are people who have access to reports on the different levels. So at the sub-county level, the person leading in, within that sub-county can narrow down to see what, what individuals are not reporting daily or what health, uh, number of healthcare workers are out there that have uh, people they are managing that are not self-reporting or symptoms that are being reported and not being followed up. That can be managed at a certain level. It just needs to be, to be to be set up that way. It is possible. Over. Um, we are almost to the end of our time. We are actually past our time. So I'll ask one last question and, and give the panelists an opportunity to give their cutting shot. So the question that I've seen uh, is, is, is this USSD code free or how much do, is it does it charge the patient? 
to actually access the system if you're using it through USSD? The, the USSD is zero rated. Um, the, the sessions and the communication are, are free for, for the users. It is, that's one of the support that we thank CDC for. They, they are paying for all that communication for that USSD. So it's zero rated. Over. And maybe one last question. Um, this is from Pamela Godia. Um, even as patients are enrolling and as our numbers are going up, her question is, is there a limit um, to the number of clients that a healthcare worker is assigned to? Um, in terms of like a, a check for the workload per healthcare worker, such that um, it's balanced. And we can also be able to know whether there's a gap in the healthcare workforce. I, I think that... <laughs> Uh, I think that's more an administrative question. I think from a technology point of view, it's possible to have as many healthcare workers. But I think in, in terms of the guidelines, I think that would be more of an administrative question. I, I may not necessarily be able to answer that. Um, thank you very much for your presentation um, on the home-based care, supporting home-based care using the Jitenga system. I'm sure a lot of us have actually learned a lot. Um, I'd like to give you and, and Jeffa an opportunity to give us your parting shot concerning this system. Thank you. Jeffa? So for me, I'll, I'll just appreciate everyone for this opportunity uh, to showcase what we've been able to do. Uh, we keep on improving the system every day. Uh, we welcome all kind of inputs to make it better. Uh, the system is not 100% uh, uh, in terms of all the loops, uh, but we, we welcome any kind of communication, any kind of improvements, uh, and uh, we hope by the end of the day, uh, it's going to help everyone. Thank you and over for me. Uh, I think from where I'm sitting, um, again, I also would like to thank um, you for inviting us uh, to come and do the presentation. Um, and uh, we, we are here, we, we innovate to, to help uh, uh, healthcare workers do their work easier, to make it easier. Uh, and, um, but at, at the end of the day, it's, you know, you use technology, but then if the healthcare worker also has, has the, 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 it's, it's, it's a double, we help each other, we use the technology and hopefully it also helps you do your work better. And, and easier and, and our, our, we, all the technologies that we develop, they keep getting better every day based on the feedback that we get from, from the actual users. So we would like to thank you for giving us a chance to, to, to present and we are always open to, to coming back if you ever need us to, over. Um, thank you very, very much for your presentation. Um, I, I believe it's, through your presentation, a lot of us are now sensitized on the Jitenge system. Um, it's, you've taken us through how it works and the application itself. And I believe this is a system that uh, most of the counties should now adopt, even as we are seeing a real surge of number of cases and the health, health facilities cannot contain all the COVID-19 confirmed patients, even as we go towards home-based care, I think this is a system that um, may help us to take care of our patients and ensure that our patients don't feel left out. And at the same time, as healthcare workers know how patients are doing. Um, with that, um, we'd like to end this session. Again, for any queries of CPD, kindly email us on kinhcpd at gmail.com or cpdpharmacy at gmail.com and we'll be able to address your issues. Um, Kindly tune in on Thursday. On Thursday, we'll be having a very interesting presentation from 2 to 3.30 on COVID-19 pandemic response, implications for culture and spirituality. And, and, we, and I believe we'll be having, it'll be a very interesting session that um, we'll all learn from. Thank you very much and have a nice evening.